Yeah. Fantastic. That's your lot for the news this week. Uh, we have some guests in with us uh, uh, in the show. We have the guys from Phalanx who are here to talk about Nanti Narking. Uh, Sam, I believe you got a chance to sit down with them. Yes, I did indeed. I am joined by the guys from Phalanx who are here to tell us about their game, Nanti Narkin. Now, this is a game I've been very excited to see. I love Victoriana and you wait till we show off some of the pieces here. It's looking fantastic. So, sitting across from me, I have Valdemar. Hello. And Adam. Hi, guys. So, guys, Nanti Narkin. First of all, what does the name mean? What does Nanti Narkin mean? Are you a fan of Victorian London? I am indeed. Yeah, so this is the slang. It means great fun. Ah, okay. Well, that shows me. Uh, so, what are you trying to do in the game? What is the focus? Well, the focus is that you have a secret character that you are playing with, mm -hmm. and you are trying uh, to, to meet uh, your victory conditions, which is secret mm -hmm. for other players, so you have to outguess uh, the other players uh, what is your plan for, for chances, and, and you can pretend that you have completely other personality. Mm. So, so it's a lot of bluffing. and Exactly, stuff. lots of bluffing, lots of interaction, mm -hmm. and uh, lots of guessing who is who. Excellent. So can you tell me some of the uh, uh, characters here? I'll show them off under the camera. So these are some of the personalities you can be, yes? Exactly. So who have we got? Fagin. Here we are. Yeah, it's Fagin. Yeah, so yeah, a very yeah. famous figure. The Kidsman. Mm. Yeah, so, so you are working uh, all the game just to put as much trouble as you can yeah, now into if London. We, now you mentioned trouble. If we look at down here... You'll see a layout of the board, all the these black marks here. These are the trouble markers. Now, this is an upgrade of the previous uh, edition of re-implementation. Uh, yeah, and re-implementation. That is a good boy for for it. And I can uh, say, the components are a massive step up on what they were. They're fantastic. Okay, carrying on. The next personality we have here is Lord Bellinger. Lord Bellinger, a distinguished looking gentleman. Yeah, exactly. So as a lord, you, uh, since there is a queen, so you cannot have the, uh, the entire London, you need to try to control at least some of the areas. Mm -hmm. Control means that you have more of your pieces than any other opponent. Yeah, now there are actually other lords in this. We've got Lord Holdhurst. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so in the basic uh, version, he's having the same goal. Mm -hmm. And Lord Balmoral. Yeah, so the lords are the three characters with the same vector conditions. I so see. if you are other character, it's, uh, the good strategy is to pretend that you are playing the lord. I see. Now, there are three more here. Just, and these are the just the basic personalities. You said yeah, there exactly. are others? Yeah, so we are we have prepared the variants. So, so for the people who know, let's say, the previous edition of the game, they have mm -hmm. something new and uh, a reason to spend another hundreds of hours with yeah. this game. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, else we've also got Monsieur, Monsieur de Sidonia. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that. Monsieur de Sidonia. And what does he do? Well, he is making money. Mm hmm his main goal is to uh, gather around 50 pounds, I think. In cash and real estate. Yeah. Now, what is the background of this character? Because I recognize Fagin. Fagin is a, a very classic character. Well, the background is that, uh, actually, he's Mr. Rothschild. Oh. But, but, uh, in order n but in order not to use the... Uh, the actual names. The actual character, yeah. Because it will be strange for the actual person to be fighting against the fictional. <laughs> well, lucky for us, Mr. Disraeli, Benjamin, mm -hmm. he wrote a novel. Mm -hmm. when, he, it, when it was clear that Mr. Monsieur de Sidonia is actually Mr. Rothschild. I see, so, so he made a character based on yeah, so, Rothschild. Uh, uh, right. So that's why we decided, okay, so we will not put Rothschild just in front of him, but, you know, just... We go one step further, so this is Mr. Rothschild, so he's a newcomer to the London. Mm. He tries to be accepted by the lords and the society, but he needs to get some influence and make, make some money. I mean, and the very similar is the story of the Chrysophrase, 
Yeah, ah, yes, Chrysler Phrase from yeah. the Discworld Ang Mopok. From Discworld Ang Mopok, he's a troll. Mm -hmm. He's a stranger. I see, but yes. He, but but, but he, he pretends to be just a normal businessman. Yeah, it's the... And to be accepted as a normal businessman, so the, let's say it, it is your goal. When I, ha when I will have uh, my estate of, let's say, 50 pounds or 50 uh, Akmopo dollars, mm -hmm. I'll be rich enough. So then you say, okay, we don't care that you are a troll or, or some, somewhere else. We accept you as one of others. Yeah. You are one of the new noblemen. I mean, just you're... You are from the ruling class. Yeah, it's the old concept of old money versus new money. Yeah, so so this is the new money person. <laughs> Excellent. And then we also got another very familiar face here, Professor James Moriarty. Exactly. Yeah. The Napoleon of crime. <laughs> if you, Nemesis of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, a very sinister figure. If at the start of your turn you have agents in a certain number of areas, then you win the game immediately. Exactly, yeah. because you are not making crimes by yourself, but you have your agents. If your agent network is wide okay. enough, if it's spread all around the city... I see. You win that way. Then you control the London. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And then the last of the personality cards you gave me here is uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Exactly. So you have to yeah. make your own investigation, who is who in the game. And your goal is to pretend all others. I see. And if at the if the game ends due due to the cards running out, then you win the game. Exactly. Yeah. In the original, yeah, so his in, task is basically to to uh, deny the victory from the others. Right. Yeah. I I've played this role in its previous iteration. That is, it's a great fun. It's a really fun one to get. It means you end up playing a slightly longer game, but. It is so much fun because you just focus on throwing spanners into the works oh, yeah. of everyone else's plans. Yeah, so just what you have also a very careful play because you need to be very careful what everybody wants, control the situation. Mm -hmm. You are just like making like a consultant detective. Mm. You must know what everybody's plan is and try to prevent it. Excellent. So, how do you carry out these uh, plans in the game? What, what? do you do? What uh, card mechanics and miniature mechanics are there? Everyone's uh, hand is five cards and on their turn everyone uh, is playing uh, one card or maybe if, if they have uh, an ability they can play more than one card mm -hmm. and uh, all these cards are also connected to uh, some um, legendary and mythical uh, yeah. p personas from from London and from the Victorian era. May I take a look at some of these yeah, cards here? Yes, please. So we've got some interesting ones here for this card. Let's see who have we got. We have Peter Stokes, Alderberg Gruner. I absolutely love the art style of this. It's very dark and dark and mysterious. Henry Mayhew. Oh, very interesting. Uh, these be real people from Victorian London. It's, and it, it is a mixture of the real people and the characters from yeah. the literature. literature. I, I can see some particular <coughs> names I want to... Yeah, we've got Bill, Bill Sykes, that notorious villain. Uh, That's why the effect on the card, if you know the, who he is, is not distracting you. It's perfectly clear. Yeah. So, Bill Sykes, take three pounds from a player of your choice. And one you handed me there a second ago, I really like. Yeah. Mrs. Hudson. Of course. There are lots of, char card, right? yeah. lots of characters from the Sherlock Holmes uh, series here. Another one that you handed there was uh, Ponga. Very vicious looking character. Yeah, he assassinates people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, of course, with such a strong cast of characters as the Sherlock Holmes ones had, yeah, there's a lot to draw upon in those stories. Yes, and uh, <coughs> the stories behind Sherlock Holmes are really well written and some sometimes quite connected to the Discworld stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, in what way do you mean? Well, I mean that uh, that's if you get to the character, I mean, just uh, the plots and everything, mm -hmm. so you can see some, something that, that makes you quite good. I mean, just uh, all the uh, watch ser uh, yeah. series of books, 
And so, I mean, th th there are kind of criminal stories. Yeah, uh, there and, is sort of mysteries. Yeah. Yeah, the, the mysteries, and and there is the main character that that that, that has to reveal the plot. So so, so sometimes you, you can see that uh, it's quite familiar. I mean, just in some general view and and some personalities. Mm. Well, Lon Victorian London was, of course, one of the biggest influences on the setting of Hank Morpork in Discworld. So it is the perfect location to bring the the uh, the game to now. Yeah, well, I mean, just one of my discoveries is that actually, if you turn the map of London yeah. 90 degrees, you get the map of Hank Morpork. Grand discovery that it is. <laughs> yeah. Let's start. Let's yeah. With the okay, shades. Yeah, the shades are in the east end. Yeah. And these are the locations that you can uh, build your houses in. Yeah. To claim to claim location yeah. bonuses. In yeah, the east exactly. end. And you know, the f what's the famous Tower of London? Ah. The Big Ben. Yeah. Of course. And it's, here we are in Westminster. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, quite similar, and the location is also similar to the Unreal Estate. Mm, I the see. Unseen University. Yeah, yeah, it is very similar to the Unreal Estate. I don't believe anything happening there either. Yeah, so just uh, it's m magical, mystical, but okay, no magic there. You know, yeah. But they are <laughs> fighting for power. And Chelsea is like Dolly Sisters. I mean, there is a football cup actually, not not in Chelsea, but it's quite yeah. connected there. So you, you put a lot of thought into how to bring these locations over, bring these... Actually, uh, no. Uh, w when I got my tube map when I was in London, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, trying to have it in the wrong direction. Guys, about, you know, just... Yeah. If you have any any doubts uh, that uh, London is not, it's not a Mopok, go to the River Thames. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, when you see this river, you know that this is Ankh and everything that was written about the Ankh River. Yeah, you can match with the Thames River. The the River Ankh, the only water you have to chew. Yeah. <laughs> so just it's it's it fits perfectly. Yeah, but you know, just uh, there are some other let's say difficult places in, in the middle of game because. Uh, when, no. we did, when we discussed this idea with Martin, Martin asked me, okay, sounds nice, but this was the easy ones. Yeah. So how did you, what do you think about uh, the small gods? Small god, the Isle of Small Gods, yes. Uh, or just the temple. I was saying, well, oh, yeah. we have a temple in London, actually, and the royal courts. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you pay money for protection. I see what you mean. You're in Holborn. Yeah, so and sometimes lawyers. I'm a lawyer by, by profession, so I can say it. Yeah, <laughs> they pretend to be a small god. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, so just and for example, when you have the dim wall, mm -hmm. there is the area of Bermondsey, and the then stadium, so it also fits perfectly. Yeah, Bermondsey. So, yeah, so, so, so and all the other this this is uh, and of course one of the fine working is the city mm -hmm. when you just can go to the real stock exchange and sell anything for money pretty much yeah you are hitting all the notes of the bustling metropolis that victorian london really was now uh one i partic part of this game i particularly want to show off are the pieces exactly these are beautiful what Let's start off with some of the houses just to uh, show these. In the in previous ones, it was all just one piece. You guys have gone above and beyond in design. Yeah, because these. we think that this is the best Martin Wallace game, so it deserves uh, the special treatment. Yeah. So these are all the different buildings you can assemble during the you can build on the board during the game. We've got everything from rundown old rookery buildings to Massive mansion houses. Yeah, it, it all depends because, you know, there are different uh, oh, areas of the game with mm -hmm. the d d different price levels. Yeah, uh, show me one there. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, six, six, six pounds. Twelve pounds, eighteen pounds. Mm. So, okay, it's, uh, it's, it's not... The price range is pretty huge, right? Yeah, yeah. indeed. So, you know, the, the dimension yeah. should be... <laughs> In the area, in Holborn, yeah. yeah, but you know, just in the East End, 
Yeah, I'd rather you put up a mansion in this than... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you put that there. Now, just to clarify, there's no uh, difference in gameplay between the different no, house no, options. It's no. not in the difference, in the, but no. the but the players, they, they they know what to put where, just in yeah. order just to make they create an, the another difference. story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they choose. Yeah, you're building up London as you go, as of you, as, and of course they're not the only ones. If uh, yeah, let's show off some of the blue, can you pass me some of the characters that you might like to show off? These are your different agents in the game. Who would you like to start with? How oh, about? Yeah. Uh, this is Lady this is one of my particular favorites. Movement. Yeah. One from the suffragette movement. There, chained to the railings, with the votes for women sign. They're really, really good game pieces. They're very surprisingly detailed. Now, I will point out, this is a prototype copy, isn't it? Uh, are these going to be uh, re resin pieces when, uh, in the final copy? No, they're, they're going to be plastic pieces. because. Oh, look at this chap here. Yeah, yeah. because? Uh, you know, the plastic pieces will be... Because they are very fragile. Mm. We have to be very careful, because we bought it with the airplane. With mm. some little instructions, the plastic pieces are much more reliable, reliable, and let's say resilient. Yeah, towards the destruction. This is one of this. This guy may be my favorite. The Tosha, yeah, disappearing into the sewers, getting ready to try and find what people throw away. That yeah. may be my favorite. Although Adam, I know you've got another favorite piece, sir. Uh, well, uh, well <laughs> to be honest, uh, yeah, how about? The jockey, for example. Oh, the jockey. Yeah. Oh, that was not who you told me earlier. The jockey is a is a very nice one. There. Get ready for a day at the races. I mean, yeah. whenever I think about London, it's the horse racing. Uh, I think that's really important. One thing I I hadn't noticed before, if you look down on the base, there is the horseshoes and everything. So yeah. Great attention detail, to detail. Yeah. And then. This was the one I meant because. Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, the this, little match. This one broke me a little I bit I when couldn't I saw find her in the her. game. I don't know. There she is, the little matchstick girl. Oh, that's a heartbreaking piece. Just buy something from her. <laughs> yeah, please, <laughs> please, for the love of us all. Uh, who who uh, made the miniatures for you? Who who did the sculpting? Uh, the Hexi Studio. Hexi Studio? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of their stuff in the past, but these these are mind-blowing to me. I absolutely love them. Now, uh, oh yes, yes, let's, uh, let's show My these. My favourite, yeah. These are your favourite? <laughs> yeah, my favourite. Let's see. Now, what are these guys called in the game? They are Grenadier Guards. Grenadier Guards. Yeah. Yeah. And when do they come into play? Because they're, they're not an agent. They're, they're brought an into the game by uh, events. Uh huh. When there there is an event, martial law. I see. They come. You you can see it in our let's play because it's it happened. Yeah. Really really fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I said, we we have already filmed the let's play of this. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, that'll be going up fairly soon. Fairly soon, I think. Yeah. Uh, now. This game is coming to Kickstarter. Exactly. Yeah? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's coming out uh, when? In the next week, yeah? Yeah, next week. Uh, should start on Monday. Mm hmm. Hopefully. Uh, should be grand. And uh, what. I know you guys are doing something a little different with your Kickstarter. Can you tell me a bit about that? Well, we tried to find a different way uh, for the goals uh, of the campaigns, uh, for the campaign. Mm -hmm. And we we uh, we chose to uh, go for a story driven campaign. Uh, while during the campaign, uh, from after we managed to uh, complete the sixty thousand uh, pounds goal, funding goal, the funding goal, uh, we will uh, bring um, we will let everyone uh, to become the character. Mm -hmm. of the stretch goals We're, who is this gentleman right here yeah the community will will be this gentleman generally we will mm -hmm. be playing the role of this gentleman i see uh going through the story uh of uh, of his beloved uh, of finding his beloved lenore <laughs> yeah actually finding 
we start uh, finding out what, what happened to her yeah. because uh, in the campaign trailer you will see that uh, he got a letter mm -hmm. inviting him to uh, to her funeral Absolutely. so he is coming to london staying at the hotel mm -hmm. and so, on the very next day we place a hotel in there yeah uh, the, it looks a bit big for the hotel <laughs> yeah but, but you know just uh, in, in order uh, to make these game pieces yeah we, we couldn't fit, fit the scale I mean, just, <laughs> and then just we, we can borrow some, some of your buildings <laughs> and put it here so just <laughs> i want to see this played out as 28 millimeter scale <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> so yeah go on yeah so just th then then you have to to uh, borrow some of your tables and your staff to build <laughs> an even bigger London. It John! Be... <laughs> but you know, uh, then you will make an open voting. Yeah. So it will be a game book play because then the community will be uh, open for deciding what he does the, on the next day. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a multiple choice. Every day something different will happen and a and choice will have to be made. And we don't know what, what, what is the course, uh, what the people will decide to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just depending on what they will decide to do, some of the pieces will be implemented into the game box. I see. So depending so, on who you go and meet in, in yeah, the story. So, yes. Yeah, so that, yes. th that's why we, we say that there will be no stretch goals. Story goals. It will be story goals. I mean, mm -hmm. if you decide that, okay, I, I, I want to let's say, have a conversation with the sailor. Okay. Then we will add the sailor miniature to the box. I see. So not all of the agent miniatures uh, is here may end up in the box. Well, it all it will depend on how the our story go with, with the missing planner goes. That's a very organic way of uh, funding and developing the game. Uh, yeah, so that's why we have brought, I mean, this is our maximum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, but we wanted not just make let's say the, an, an ordinary campaign. Uh, yeah. uh, let's, that we are caring about how much money did, did we raise. We are not doing this for money. We're doing this for fun. And he wants to uh, have deliver fun, even on the Kickstarter campaign. So so, so let's the game begin yeah. as soon as possible. It, it's a and in and in order, if you are guessing whether to back us or not. We have prepared a little bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take I mean, a look just, at these. Yeah, there will be more of them. These oh, are just the samples. All metal. All yep. metal. Yeah, but every bugger will get 10 of those big one crowns and not 10. They're very 20, nice pieces. 20 crowns and 30 shillings pieces instead of the classical cardboard ones. You know, just. Yeah. Uh, here, let's take it. Can I show off some of the cardboard ones just alongside it? Yeah, just, just nice these out. Yeah. yeah. Well, the cardboard will be also a little bit nicer because these are just the preview copies. Yeah, of course. Now, the, these are, you know, yeah, they're not bad, but how much nicer is it to play with a big, hefty piece of metal? Exactly. Yeah. Especially when, when you take, when you, for example, <laughs> I played this card, give me five. Oh. Do I have to give it up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I just want to point out, he, Painstaking. Yeah. he hit me with the Fire Brigade card there, and I'm fairly certain he's having a go at me because I got him with this during the last <laughs> one, so... Yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I, I didn't play nice. The uh, What other things can we expect to see in the Kickstarter? Can you let us uh, know any other things that might be cropping up? Well, it's, I mean, just the, the story will be revealed, revealed day after day, mm -hmm. so I don't want to make any spoilers now. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, I tried, guys. Okay, well, I think this is a great game. I can't wait to have another game of it. It is one of my, uh, just one of my favorite board game setups and premises out there. I love the hidden motive mechanics. It's and the paranoia it builds quite oh, yeah. a lot, surprisingly. Yeah, we found out about it during yeah. the last play. <laughs> yeah, and true. There was enough. quite a lot of tension build up right there, mm. especially with all the trouble markers and not knowing if there is a faking around. Mm. Actually, yeah. actually, when you are an advanced player of non let's say a mop or not nothing, you should start your turn. First, you must check out all the victory conditions. That's why we have prepared the player eight. Mm -hmm. 
might with that you can make a quick check out. Yeah. Very Maybe useful little now. guide here to show you the goals. Yeah, yeah so just you, you, you see what are the potential goals and you just look on the map and see, okay, who how many trouble markers are there? Oh, is is there a faking mm. <laughs> among us? Yeah. I'm actually noticing um because up here we've got the normal character cards that we saw. And you, you mentioned previously that there is an expanded play option for others with, with more options available. I noticed one character name that we didn't see there earlier. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes, who have... <laughs> oh, here he is. This makes me ridiculously happy. I read that book every year. Oh, really? <laughs> really, I read that book every year at Christmas time. Christmas, <laughs> yeah, of course. On Christmas, yeah. yeah. Someone else. Well, also, I thought I'd try uh, it in the... Another song. character. Oh, another one? Yeah, from Mr. Dickens. Mr. Thomas Gradgrind. He's also a person living out of the books. Excellent. I mean, because uh, I didn't consider him first as a character, but he is mentioned in another books. For example, I didn't uh, have knowledge like the Fagin, mm -hmm. that he is not only the character from the Oliver Twist. When I was li uh, studying literature on crime in Victorian London, Mm. He was one of, let's say, nobody knows who people like Fagin were, so he was a, just an archetype. I see. So the, so, so another Gradgrind is also an archetype of a person who is trying to get some some money and who is not very keen of uh, spending them. Mm -hmm. so, so now there is also, let's say, more an economical role in this game, that there are more characters in the variant. Mm. That are trying to get some kind of possessions. Yeah. So it's not only one person because uh, in the classical ver version, only Monsieur de Sidonia, he's mm -hmm. the, the only one guy uh, who is looking for money. And, he, and, he, and if you say, oh, there is a guy, he has a little bit more money than everyone else. <laughs> Perhaps he's the guy, so it's quite easy to spot. But all the others, the lords, Moriarty, Mm. They don't need money. I mean, just they are spending money all the time. So just if there's anyone not spending money, but now with more characters like this, the game will be even funnier. I mean, it's never easy to guess. Mm. It's never easy to to you, you cannot really assume who is. Who and even is the persons that, that we have in the game, they have changed their goals. Yeah. So there is a set of nine cards. Yeah, as we uh, just grab these quickly, and as we saw them. Previously, just lay them out here. There's a whole host of interesting personalities to take on. But as you said, this new advanced play allows you to mix things up a bit more. Even the lords have different ones to each other. Exactly. So then, when you're playing four players, there are four, nine different personalities to choose from. So it's not so easy to outguess the other players. Mm. So then you are having, uh, you, you can have all the other, the action cards that you already know, but you already have a new game experience with this. Fantastic. So where can people go now before the Kickstarter is up to find out a little bit more? Well, basically, mm, first direction would be the Kickstarter self, uh, the Kickstarter page itself. Mm -hmm. Because the, pre the preview page is already there, yeah. so you <clears throat> please leave your feedback there. Yeah, we 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 would really like you guys to leave uh, feedback. It's very important to us. As well, you can find uh, the trailer. We've recently put up a trailer that introduces uh, you the, guys story. to the to the story yeah, of, to the story of, of yeah, um, Lenore. <laughs> so this is Lenore herself. This is yes. Lenore from uh, Raven. Yes, of yeah. course. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to go and check out the the trailer. It is a very stylistic introduction to the game and its setting. Now, before we finish up here, would you guys be willing to give away a prize for the viewers? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Excellent. What, what, what would you be interested in sharing with them? Well, we want to... Uh, well, as Valdemar said, we are making this game for fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were thinking about... Uh, giving you guys a, a 20 pound pledge upgrade for the backers yeah so you already have to be a backer on this yes but then you will be uh, granted for free the add-ons to this game i mean 
because y y you'll get the bribe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. what is more, but w w what we plan to have is the enlarged map. giant map, giant, a much bigger map, map, yeah. and also the card holders and maybe some other stuff that we'll in invent on our road back to Poland. <laughs> Wonderful. So you're just going to be pl making up even more things as you go, though. Uh, we always have uh, a, a lot of ideas, and we know just uh, the story can reveal something that's not expected. <laughs> not unexpected, but you know. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming here and sharing this and letting us play the game. If you want to see this, be sure to keep an eye out for the Let's Play. It was a lot of fun, a very tense game. I, I think it'll be uh, be pretty cool to watch as well. In the meantime, we'll carry on with the rest of the show.